today's presentation, we're going to be taking a look at an indicator called the Williams Percent R. But before we get started, let's take a quick look at our disclaimer. Today's training is designed to instruct in some of the basics of Metastock and the Downloader program. We will provide some guidelines for using certain features within the software. However, nothing presented in this training is, is intended as, or should be construed to be, a recommendation to buy or sell any specific security. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risks inherent in trading. Equus shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. The Williams Percent R is what's called an oscillator type of indicator. If you're newer to trading or newer to technical analysis or charting, your first question might be, what is an oscillator? Well, an oscillator is actually called a range-bound indicator, meaning that it is actually plotted typically on a scale from 0 to 100 and will only move down so far or up so high before it actually has to turn around. And it'll move between these zones to help identify periods or times when the actual security or market is considered to be overbought or oversold. You'll find that this particular indicator is actually very similar to another indicator called the stochastic oscillator. And in fact, if you plotted the two indicators side by side using the same time periods, you'll find that the two indicators actually look very similar. The one, note, one thing that you'll notice definitely different is that the stochastic oscillator will actually have a little bit smoother of a line. The reason being is that the stochastic oscillator has what's called internal smoothing built into the formula of the actual indicator, thus giving it a smoother line. The Williams percent R, since it does not have this internal smoothing built into it, is actually more sensitive to the price movement of the security or the market that it's being plotted on. Another difference is that this particular indicator is actually plotted upside down and plotted with a negative scale, which I'll demonstrate here shortly. But the main purpose of the Williams percent R, or any oscillator for that matter, is to help indicate when a security or a market is becoming overbought or oversold, and then identifying where to actually get in or out of a particular market. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and take a look at the Metastock program with the Williams percent R being plotted on it. This particular chart that we're looking at is a daily chart of Adobe Systems. And if you have the Metastock program, you'll find the Williams percent R in what's called the indicator quick list, which is located up here at the top. All the indicators and studies built into the Metastock program are located here in the indicator quick list. And how you actually plot any of them is that you find the particular one you're interested in, hold down your left mouse button, and then just drag it over onto your chart. If I let go of my mouse button at this point, the indicator itself would be plotted right on top of the price bars. But if I drag it up here to the top, you'll see that a new little blank window has popped up next to my pointer, indicating that there will be a new window plotted in this chart. So let's do that. I'll go ahead and leave that. And at this point, you can actually choose the time periods that you want the indicator to use. You can choose the colors, the styles, or even horizontal lines in the indicator as well. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the defaults and leave OK and choose OK. <clears throat> At this point, it plots the actual indicator right on my chart. Now, as I was telling you earlier, this particular indicator, one of the differences between this and other oscillators, is that this one is actually used a scale, an upside down scale, and it's actually being plotted on a negative scale. It really doesn't make any difference. You don't have to actually take a look at the numbers because what you're actually looking for in this particular oscillator or any oscillator are extreme levels. This oscillator uses an extreme level at negative 80 and an extreme level at negative 20. When the actual indicator itself reaches a level below this negative 80 point here on, on this particular window, it is basically saying that the security or market is in an oversold situation or it is relatively low compared to where it's recently been. It's very important. And then vice versa, at the top up here, when the actual indicator itself is above the blue line, it's basically saying that the security or market that you're looking at 
is relatively high compared to where it's recently been, or it's possibly overbought, meaning that you might want to take a look at either selling that particular security or possibly going short. The most popular way to actually use this particular indicator on your charts, or the way most people use it, is that when it crosses this extreme level here, it is basically indicating an overbought situation, and they wait until the actual line actually crosses back down below this extreme level. And at this point, and only at that point, would they, they then consider either selling their security or possibly going short. On the other side of the scale, when the indicator itself reaches an extreme level below the negative 80 point, the security or the market is then considered to be oversold. At this point, there's a good chance that the actual security might move up at that point, and to actually buy it, you would literally wait until the indicator crosses back up above this extreme level at the bottom. That's the most basic way to actually interpret this particular indicator, and what you'll see is just taking a look at this indicator on Adobe Systems, it actually did a pretty good job of identifying low and high points of the actual security every time it crosses these different levels here. The one thing that you always have to be careful of with this indicator as well as any type of oscillator type of indicator is that again the indicator itself it helps identify whether the security is relatively low or relatively high considering to be or compared to where it's recently been. And what will happen is, is a lot of times the actual indicator will continue to stay at a certain level for a long period of time, giving you false buy or sell signals. So a good way to use an oscillator is actually to combine it with another type of indicator or the actual price movement of the security itself. For example, if you actually got a buy signal, which you did here at this point on this chart, Rather than actually buying it, as soon as this line crosses above the extreme level, wait until the prices also move in the favor of the actual direction of that indicator as well. So actually, again, wait until the prices have crossed a predetermined level that you set on your chart. And then vice versa, on the other side of the coin, if you get a sell signal, wait until the price has actually moved down far enough to actually indicate a point to possibly sell or go short. Another great way to use this indicator is to use it in conjunction with another type of indicator. One of the most popular indicators to pair this one with is one called the MACD. And again, same thing, instead of actually taking the actual buy or sell as soon as it crosses that level, wait until you get a second confirmation from another indicator like the MACD, and then when that one actually crosses, then go ahead and take that buy or sell uh, based on the situation. And by combining more than one indicator to get your buy or sell will make your trading system that much more robust. Inside the Metastock program, just remember that if you ever have any questions about a particular indicator or anything else on the screen, all you have to do is just to remember to right click on the particular item and choose help. Because inside the Metastock program, you'll find that the help is extremely well done and there is plenty of help for you just a click away. In addition to that, you can also get help through our company and the help can be done either directly through the phone if you'd like to call them directly. You can also email the support department or you can also chat with the support department if you have the latest version of Metastock. But if you have any more questions, please contact our support department and we'll be happy to help you with it.